two questions. First, uh, you said in the topper that the president takes classified information seriously, and the president said last night that he never discussed classified material with anyone. But the special counsel's report said that on three different occasions he did discuss it with this ghostwriter. I, I understand it didn't meet the bar for prosecution, but how do you reconcile the president's statement with what's in the report? Sure. Well, if you read the full report, it actually gets into each of those three instances. I think Justin rightly points out that we're talking about three instances out of 200 and you know, 50 pages of evidence that they're talking about uh, criticizing. Um, I think it's important to look at those three examples. Two of them are his own notes to himself in his personal diary that he was reading about to his ghostwriter for his memoir, for a memoir about uh, his life after his son Bo died. And he was reading these passages that he had written to himself to share information with him. And he took pains, and the report lays this out to express how sensitive some of the information was and that we should be careful with it. And of those two passages from his diaries that he talked about with his ghostwriter, weren't in the book. There's no classified information in the book. And so, and so I want to just make that point. And the second is there's a kind of an allegation of uh, you know, willfully taking a, a classified document that he talked about uh, with his ghostwriter. That's false. As the president talked about last night, he was, again, talking about a handwritten letter that he had sent to President Obama and faxed to him about the Afghanistan troop surge. Like, these, are, these are the president's own personal writings, you know, the president's own diary notes to himself. And I think there's an important thing to think about here. There's plenty of histor historical analogs, uh, the most notable of which is Ronald Reagan, President Reagan, whose diaries very famously uh, became a subject of a lot of attention in the country. Uh, and the Justice Department knew that President Reagan's diaries had classified information in them. Knew it at the time. He took those diaries home. He read those diaries to people. He shared the actual physical copy of the, of the, of the diaries, which uh, the special counsel report talks about. Joe Biden never even gave custody of his notebooks to anybody. And, uh, and, and they never even asked for those diaries back, and they never launched an investigation. And why is that? It's because historically, going back to the beginning of the country, presidents keep diaries. They, we, we should want our presidents to be thoughtful and deliberative about the decisions that they make on the most consequential issues of our time. And we have, we have entrusted presidents to be safe keepers of this information. And, to, and we have expressed you know, great gratitude, uh, including many of you in the press, when, when presidents share through books and other things insights into their thinking and decision making and historical context. And so I think it's lost in the shuffle of all of this that the president did what all of his predecessors had done, which was take notes for himself, keep a diary of his own daily life, so that he could think back on these big moments of, of the time. And so, you know, those are, that's important to know about this allegation that there was, that there was sharing classified Right. Is your contention that just because the president rewrote classified material in his own words and then shared it with somebody who didn't have the security clearance for it, that it was okay? Well, let's look at the report. I mean, we talked a little lot about the report. I understand it's long, 400 pages. I, you know, I'm not sure how many people in this room have read the entire thing. Page three, which I think is what everybody's asking about and understandably says, quote, Mr. Biden shared information, including some classified information with his ghostwriter, right? But if you go to page 248, the report says, quote, we conclude that the evidence does not establish that Mr. Biden willfully disclosed national defense information to his writing assistant. That's in the report. That's the conclusion that was made based on the evidence. And, and I, there's something else I want to add about this because it's gone, we've gone back and forth. On page one of the report, it says the president willfully retained classified marked documents relating to Afghanistan. But on page 215 of the report, it says, quote, there's in fact a shortage of evidence on these points. On page five of the report, everybody read that, first few pages, says, quote, Mr. Biden's memory was significantly limited. But here's something that everybody should make sure that they see. Elsewhere in the report, he says, quote, we expect the evidence of Mr. Biden's state of mind to be compelling, pointing to him providing, quote, clear and forceful testimony. That's his comments on his state of mind later in the report. And so I think it's important to kind of take the report in its totality and understand that in that report, the facts and evidence refute the theories that are floated that they explored. I think maybe we disagree on if he should have used the word willfully last night, but there's one other thing I wanted to ask you about, which is that his attorneys said that they were going to work on a process to make sure that none of this happens again. Yeah. 
Uh, obviously, there's the potential that this administration has less than a year left, so I'm wondering if you could detail uh, <laughs> uh, what the timeline is on that, what you guys are considering for, uh, for that type of process. That's yeah, a great question. I think that something that this uh, issue a year ago brought to light is uh, that this is a unfortunately very common occurrence uh, in our country. The National Archives has talked about how 80 different libraries and collections just in the last um, decade or so have called and said, oh, we found classified documents in these papers. And they have a process that you're supposed to turn those back in. But then, you know, we had the issue with President Biden. Immediately after that, we had the issue with Vice President Pence. And I think it's important to understand that this is a common occurrence. And the president thinks that we should fix it. Like, he gave all these documents back. He knew he did not that these governments should be in possession, that the government should be in possession of these documents. And so what we're going to do is the president's going to appoint a task force to review how transitions look at classified material to ensure that there are better processes in place so that when, you know, staffs around the building are rushedly packing up boxes to try to get out during a transition as quickly as possible, at the same time and up until the very moment that, you know, they're still governing and doing matters of state, you know, they're going to try to make recommendations that that can be fixed, and he's going to appoint a senior government leader to do that. We'll have more on that soon. 2017 that he had classified material downstairs. He posted about it. 